As plastic pollution continues to pour into our oceans, nonprofits and environmental innovators are building new cleaning solutions for large and small bodies of water. Well, you can add the sea cleaners to the growing list of ocean cleaning heroes. The Sea Cleaner's secret weapon in the battle against plastic pollution is the Mobula 8 Plastic Catching Boat, which is a real-life multi-purpose watercraft built to clean the oceans and rivers. The Sea Cleaners also have an ace up their sleeve with their massive green ship slash smart ship they are calling the Manta. The Manta, which is modeled after an Eagle Ray, will be an emissions-free plastic collecting boat. It will also be the Sea Cleaner's ambassador ship with a science lab and outreach center to host scientific expeditions and promote sustainability at the same time. The Manta is currently in development, so let's start with the Mobula 8, which is already in action. The boat was specifically designed to travel up rivers and streams to stop plastic pollution at the source before it can float downstream and enter the ocean. Heavy rains play a big part in washing pollution into rivers, which are the main channels for floating trash that eventually gets carried out to sea. I spoke with the Sea Cleaners technical director, Frederic Silvert, about the Mobula 8. The Mobula 8 is able to capture macro waste, so basically big pieces of plastic. Also, it is able to capture micro waste. Micro waste is plastic that is smaller than 10 millimeters. It is also capable to collect hydrocarbons like oil spillage from vessels, uh, cargo vessels. So it is a small boat capable to navigate in calm waters, so basically rivers, but also in coastal areas. And just with two operators, you are able to collect and to sort the waste on board. Uh, this has a very uh, nice advantage. You heard that right. The boat can also be used to clean up oil spills and has a built-in suction system in the nose which intakes debris as well as hydrocarbons, otherwise known as oil. When oil and debris enters the mouth of the Mobula A, it passes through three different filters, each designed to catch the different types of plastic and oil waste. The first filter, it's what will collect the micro waste, so the big pieces of waste. Then you have a second filter. The second filter will capture all the micro waste. If you can imagine a very thin mesh, and you can select the size of mesh, depending of what you want to capture. If you do not want to capture the plankton, then you remove that second filter. Eventually, you have the exhaust of a tank, uh, like a drain that is going down. So everything that is like oil will remain at the surface and the water is sucked down so that you have captured hydrocarbons or oil that, uh, that floats. The Mobula 8 has two arms spanning four meters across on the front of the boat for collecting floating garbage as it travels through the water at a very slow speed. The slow speed mitigates the danger to wildlife so they don't get caught up in the mouth or the filters on board. If an animal is accidentally captured by the Mobula 8, like say a jellyfish for example, which cannot swim very fast, the onboard sorting crew can easily take it out of the system and return it to the water safely. The Mobula 8 was designed in partnership with a French engineering company called Effenor. Effenor and the sea cleaners have used a cradle to coffin approach, creating a life cycle analysis for all the materials that they will be using to build the Mobula 8. They don't want any part of this boat to wind up in a landfill at the end of its life. The Mobula 8 was launched on June 2nd, 2021 in Pampol, France, and is currently deployed in Indonesia. The boat, you can take it in your truck on the trailer. Also, it is able to be folded and put in a container, offshore container, so you can transport that boat very easily all over the world. The Sea Cleaners partner with local NGOs to deploy and operate the Mobula 8 boats, while at the same time providing processing solutions such as plastic waste cleaners, grinders, conveyor belt machines, all of which help process and recycle the plastic they collect. It's good to get and gather waste, but then uh, you also want to make something good of it, not just to dump it in a landfill. So we are organizing with local NGOs the best way to get benefit of the waste we collect. And by doing so, we promote circular economy development locally. According to the Sea Cleaners, it can clean 15,000 square meters per hour and has an onboard storage capacity of 2,400 kilograms. Now let's shift gears and talk about the Manta. The Manta is the Sea Cleaners concept ocean cleaning boat. 
sporting all the bells and whistles for cleaning up massive amounts of pollution in as little time as possible. The Manta boat, the boat that is just behind here, this boat is able to collect plastic at sea. With uh, laboratories inside, we are able to run scientific missions. We are able to welcome up to 20 persons and to uh, make presentations or workshops related to plastic pollution, plastic usage, and so it is a demonstration ship. This massive ship will be powered by a variety of renewable energy propulsion systems, such as hydro generators, massive solar power array, and a pair of wind turbines on the back. Plus it's keeping it old school with massive sails reaching 60 plus meters into the sky. But the crown jewel of the Manta, in my opinion, is a pelletized plastic powered engine. Try saying that three times fast. They are calling the waste to energy conversion unit. Here's how the system works. As the Manta moves through the water, the floating plastic is picked up by three floatable netting systems and a pair of conveyor belts located under the hull of the ship. The conveyor belts bring the plastic on board the ship and carry it up to sorting stations where a crew sorts the waste for recycling. The captured plastic in the nets can be hoisted onto the ship using wenches and dumped into collection bins where it then makes its way through the sorting process. Metals and glass are brought back to shore for recycling with local waste management companies, while all organic materials are returned back to the ocean. All the plastic waste is cleaned and shredded into plastic pellets and processed into fuel for the Manta ship to carry on its mission. Using a process called pyrolysis, the waste to energy conversion unit superheats the pelletized plastic, producing a synthetic gas, which passes through a turbine and is converted into heat and electricity to power the Manta. After the conversion, the heat and gas emissions are captured by the system and are not released into the atmosphere, keeping in line with the Manta's sustainability and zero carbon goals. From the waste to energy conversion unit, there are different kinds of waste. There are the solid waste, like uh, ash, it is called solid residue, and this, we store it. The solid waste stored on board is eventually emptied out on land during stopovers at different ports on the Manta's route. But I bet you're asking, what about the gas emissions produced by the waste to energy conversion unit? To reduce the fumes, we are using a scrubber. Basically, you inject water in small uh, droplets and it makes a kind of filter. It takes off all the pollutants from the fumes. The Manta is also equipped with two Mobula 10 vessels, which are slightly larger than the Mobula 8, allowing them to deploy in deeper ocean conditions as well as rougher waters and fast flowing rivers. The Manta can collect up to three tons of waste per hour, according to the sea cleaners, which could add up to between five and 10,000 metric tons of pollution per year, with the ability to process 100% of the waste collected on board the vessel. The Manta is not only a massive cleaning ship, it is designed to be an attention grabber, spreading the word and raising awareness about the ongoing plastic pollution crisis happening on the planet right now. Scientific experiments and public awareness campaigns will be open to the general public on board the Manta during scientific stopovers in locations around the world. The Manta will begin construction in 2022 and is slated to be launched in 2024. The sea cleaners hope that the Manta will be the first of its kind, showcasing new green shipping technologies for green ships and smart ships, and hope that it will serve as a lever to accelerate the deployment of the circular economy according to the seacleaners.org. Well, I know I'd love to get on the Manta. That thing looks really cool, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, ring that bell for more videos from CNET's YouTube channel. Check out our environmental tech playlist. I put a link in the description of this video, and thanks for watching.